What's up guys, TechNab here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what, in my opinion, is one of the best looking graphics cards of all time. So this is the RTX 3070, and in my opinion it's one of the best looking graphics cards ever made. The entire 30 series was actually extremely good looking, but for these ones they actually put the fans on the same side, which actually give it a little bit more of a unique kind of look. Now this was released back in 2020, during the middle of the actual GPU crisis, and they became extremely popular and it wasn't just because of the looks or the performance they gave. Nvidia continued to produce these throughout the GPU crisis, particularly these FE models, and they maintained their MSRP of just under £500. Now for the looks and the performance you're getting for under £500, particularly at the time when graphics cards were reaching the £1000 mark, gamers were climbing all over each other just to be able to get one of these. Because Nvidia actually kept producing them and actually kept making them available, they're not as rare as the original Founders Editions from other kind of generations, but they were actually quite hard to get hold of because everybody wanted one and you had to be really, really quick on the click to be able to get one. Now we know a few people that actually managed to get these and this is how we actually stumbled upon this one because somebody recently had an upgrade and they let us have this one off them. As a mid-range card at the time, the performance of these was exceptional and gave you a real entry level into 1440p high fidelity graphics. Not only that, but it would give people a decent entry level ray tracing graphics cards because these are actually pretty good when it comes to doing that. Now prices for these haven't actually got much better. To be able to purchase one of these, you're probably still looking around the three to four hundred pound mark, which is not great considering that this card is now two and a half years old. But of course we wanted to look at it today to see if the performance it's providing can actually still warrant that cost. Now for today's video we've done something a little bit different. We have run some gaming benchmarks for this and that's usually what we're interested in but we've also run some synthetics. We haven't exactly compared this to any other card but we've given you some figures just to give you an idea of what kind of things you're going to get. The tests that we ran it against were four different tests from 3D Mark, and that's Time Spy, Fire Strike, Port Royale and Speedway which the latter two do give you a mix of ray tracing performance and then against the three Unigen benchmarks Unigen Heaven, Valley and Superposition. Now hopefully those scores that we provided will give you some indication of what this card can perform particularly against what you currently have so if you're looking for this to be an upgrade option it'd be good to run those benchmarks on your current system and it'll give you an indication of the difference but as usual we have also run some gaming benchmarks and this time we've run a bit of an extensive list the games that we chose to benchmark with this are a little bit different to what we normally do we've tried to aim for the more higher end games particularly the games that i kind of play so let's jump into those benchmarks and see what this thing can do
So as you can see from those benchmarks, this card has no troubles with 1080p gaming. On pretty much on all of those games, we managed to skyrocket above 100 frames per second on average with pretty decent 1% lows. It also gives you a good entry level into 1440p where we saw some fantastic results as well. In 1440p high settings, this card managed to get over an average of 60 frames per second on pretty much all the games that we've tested. And even in 4K, it gave a decent experience. There was only a couple of games that we couldn't hit a magic target of 60 frames per second in 4K high settings settings but for the rest it did actually manage to hit those kind of targets so not only over time has this card managed to kind of maintain its price but it's also improved a lot giving you an entry level even into 4k when it came to ray tracing we didn't do that much testing but we did try a couple of games just to see how well it worked and one of those games was portal rtx now we had no issues or this card had no issues running portal rtx at all if you just dropped it into a bit of a low setting you could actually play the game perfectly smoothly with all the ray tracing effects that you want so it actually gave us a great experience in that game now this card, even two and a half years after its release, is still pretty impressive. And particularly when it comes to the design of the card, this thing looks amazing in any system, whether it's sideways or whether it's vertically mounted, it looks pretty good. And temperatures were not too bad either. Even though the card itself was quite hot to touch after a couple of hours of gaming, it actually maintained a pretty decent cool temperature of around 50 degrees. So at least this cooler kind of works. I do believe that the actual cooler itself is fully metal framed and that's going to make up part of the uh, heatsink itself anyway, which is probably why it was so hot to touch. But Nvidia did a pretty decent job with this. Now this card isn't staying with us unfortunately, even though we would love to have it around. It is actually going to be an upgrade for somebody's system and I think they're actually going to love it quite a lot. They are currently running an AMD graphics card and an older 5000 series but they want to actually get into a little bit of ray tracing as well as increasing those settings up a little bit particularly in terms of resolution and this card is going to give it for them. We will be doing a video as a comparison on that and the card that it will be replacing is the RX 5700 XT so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see the difference between them. Let us know in the comments below is the RTX 3070 something that you would consider for your system or if you actually did manage to pick one up how is the gaming going for you don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one